While most people spend most of their lives struggling to earn a living, a much smaller number seem to have everything going their way. Instead of just earning a living, the smaller group is busily working at building and enjoying a fortune. Everything just seems to work out for them. And here sits the much larger group, wondering in awe on how life can be so unfair, complicated, and unjust. So what's the major difference between the little group with so much and the larger group with so little? Despite all the factors that affect our lives, like the kind of parents we have, the schools we attended, the part of the country we grew up in, none has as much potential power for doing good as the ability to dream. Dreams are a projection of the kind of life we want to lead. Dreams can drive you. Dreams can make you skip over obstacles. When we allow our dreams to pull us, they unleash a creative force that can overpower everything in our way. To unleash this power, though, your dreams must be well-defined. A fuzzy future has little pull power. Well-defined dreams are not fuzzy. Wishes are fuzzy. To really achieve your dreams, to really have your future plans pull you, your dreams must be vivid. Most people think that happiness comes out of being successful or having good health, when in fact the reverse is true. Happiness is not something that's earned or deserved. Happiness is simply a state of mind by which our thinking is positive a good share of the time. If you wait until you feel deserving of having pleasant thoughts about your life, you'll end up convincing your subconscious that you're undeserving of happiness. And the result is, you'll be unhappy and unsuccessful in most of your undertakings. It's not selfish or wrong to be happy, regardless of where you are in life. So be happy. Happiness is a means to an end, success and well-being. And it's also an end in and of itself that we all desire. Happiness is not something that happens to you. It's something that you cultivate, that you determine and control. If you're waiting for happiness to happen to you, you're going to have a long wait. Instead, leapfrog to it right now. How do you do that? Well, it's really very simple. By being and acting happy, even when you're not. It's what all winners do and it's what you should do and do it now. Right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. Never let it be said you didn't learn. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. And the wind is blowing around the world. The world is in solution. Things are a changing. The walls have come down. All kinds of things are happening. In Russia tonight, today, the winds are blowing. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail, sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got's what's available. Don't curse what you got. On this planet, all we got's the seed that's here, the soil that's here, the miracle of life that's here, the opportunity that's here, the seasons that are here, that's all we got. Wherever you've come from in your country, the economy you got, that's all you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your, of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. If we were to send out our desires intensely, to visualize them until our very mentalities vibrated with the things we long for, and to work persistently in their direction, we would attract them. Everywhere there are disappointed men and women who have soured on life because they could not get what they longed for, a musical or art education, the necessary training for authorship, for law or medicine, for engineering, or for some other vocation to which they felt they had been called. They are struggling along in an uncongenial environment, railing at the fate which has robbed them of their own. They feel that life has cheated them, when the truth is they have cheated themselves. 
they never got the spindle and distaff ready that would have drawn them to the flax for the spinning of a happy and complete life web. They did not insistently and persistently send out their desires and longings. They did not nurse them and positively refuse to give them up. Above all, they did not put forth their best efforts for their realization. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before it's done. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of the world. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except humans seems to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? The answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice that something might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that strip, live a totally different way the next time. Why do you work? Why do you get up in the morning? 19 out of 20 had no idea. If you ask them, they'll say, well, everyone goes to work in the morning, and that's the reason they do it, because everyone else is doing it. Now let's get back to our definition of success. Who succeeds? The only person who succeeds is the person who is progressively realizing a worthy ideal. He's the person who says, I'm going to become this, and then begins to work toward that goal. I'll tell you who the successful people are. A success is the school teacher who's teaching school because that's what he or she wants to do. The success is the woman who's a wife and mother because she wanted to become a wife and mother and is doing a good job of it. The success is the man who runs the corner gas station because that was his dream. That's what he wanted to do. The success is the successful salesman who wants to become a top-notch salesman and grow and build with his organization. A success is anyone who is doing deliberately a predetermined job because that's what he decided to do deliberately. But only one out of 20 does that. That's why today there isn't really any competition unless we make it for ourselves. Instead of competing, all we have to do is create. For each of us, the amount of money required to be wealthy will differ. But the dream for all of us, I'm sure, is the same. Freedom from financial pressure. More freedom of choice, freedom to enjoy, and the opportunity to create and to share. So decide for yourself what wealth means to you. Latch on to your own mental image of wealth. And let's see if the ideas I'm about to bring to you will make sense. And perhaps provide you with the inspiration to put the plan into high action. So that as the days pass, you will discover a growing sense of freedom and dignity, self-worth, substance, and lifestyle. When you know within yourself that there's something you want to do, and I believe that all of us are born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do, that all of us have some goodness within us, and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts, and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable, you stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. I have a friend that at the beginning of the year I was in Los Angeles giving a speech and, and I do a seminar teaching people how to become involved in the speaking business. And, and also one called Speaking with Power, teaching people how to begin to develop their communication skills. And this friend, I said, I want you to work with me. I called her up. She said, Les, are you sure I can do it? Sure you can. You have a PhD in communications. I don't have that. If I can do it, sure you can do it. In fact, I'm going to give you the support that you need. Here's what I realized, ladies and gentlemen. We only have enough energy to take us to a certain level, but it's necessary 
that we assemble ourselves with other people who share our vision, other people that can see it for us, to give ourselves a home court advantage. The other thing that keeps most people from realizing their true greatness and their true potential, circumstances, their environment. There are many people who believe because of where they're born, because of the area where they are in life and where they find themselves, that's all they know. Given my circumstances, ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. See, I know something about you, even not knowing you, that you've got greatness within you. You have the ability to do things that you can't even begin to imagine. You have talents and skills in you that you haven't even begun to reach for yet.